This Trek Madone is seriously quick. One of the quickest aero race bikes I've yet tested. There can't be many bikes that look as fast stood still as this brand new Trek Madone SLR disc. It's also, in my opinion, one of the best looking bikes we've had in the office in a while with a cool two-tone gloss over matte paint finish and a really purposeful looking aero frame and fork. It's also one of the most expensive test bikes we've had in a while with a £10,000 price tag. But is it as fast as it looks? Well, later on in the video, I'll tell you how it rides by taking it for a spin. But first, let's look at some of the details of the bike and why it's so fast and why it's so expensive. But let's start at the front because aerodynamics is all about frontal surface area. So you look at the bike from the front, it's very narrow very skinny fork blade, a tapered head tube, and a new two-piece integrated aero handlebar and stem. And all the cables are tucked inside the handlebar, the stem, and in the frame. It's all about reducing drag as much as possible. But if we look at the frame from the side, where well, it's a different story. It's got the deepest profile fork blades and the biggest down tube I've probably seen on a road bike in a long, long time. And it's all about reducing drag. Now, like the previous generation Trek Madone, this bike uses cam tail profiles. It's essentially taking an aerofoil, like an aeroplane wing, chopping the tail off, so you reduce the weight, you increase the stiffness, and you keep within the UCI's old 3-1 ratio rule. This cam tail profile is used on the fork blades, the head tube, the seat tube, the down tube, and the seat post, and also the rear stays. So it's all about reducing drag, making it as fast as possible. The new handlebar is worth a bit more of a mention. On the previous Trek Madone, they had a one-piece carbon aero handlebar, but for this new generation bike, they have a two-piece design, and that allows a bit of adjustment. There are four bolts underneath the stem. Undo those, and you can adjust the tilt or the angle of the handlebar. As well as that, you can also adjust the stem length and the handlebar width. However, the downside is you do have to stick to the company's own handlebar and stem. You can't fit a regular off-the-shelf handlebar or stem, but it does at least provide a bit of adjustment and it's most likely, if you're buying this bike, you're buying it from a Trek dealer and they'll be able to give you a fit and make sure you have the right handlebar and stem to suit your needs. So that's the front of the bike. Let's move further back because there's some more interesting stuff going on back here. So this bike has a new second generation ISO speed decoupler. Now a quick history lesson. The ISO speed decoupler was first introduced on the Trek Damani endurance bike and it's basically a way of separating the seat post and seat tube from the mainframe allowing the saddle to move back and forth to provide a bit of compliance, a bit of comfort when you're dealing with rough roads. Now Trek first introduced the ISO speed decoupler on the previous generation Trek Madone, but for this new bike, they gave it the version two, which allows adjustability. So as you can see, there's a little slider, and you basically undo a couple of bolts, move that slider, and you choose where you're having the firm setting, which would be here somewhere, or in the softest setting where it is at the moment. The idea being that you can simply tune the compliance to suit your needs. So if you're riding very smooth circuits, you can have it in a firmest setting. If you're dealing with rough roads, put it in a softest setting for a bit more comfort. As well as that adjustability, there's also a new rubber bumper stop at the back, which provides a bit of rebound damping just to control the movement so it's not going to flex wildly out of control. And it's also integrated into the top tube. The previous Madone had it in the seat tube. It's now in the top tube, provides a cleaner look and just a bit more aero than the previous design as well. While we're at the back of the bike, there's also an internal seat clamp with colored bolts there to adjust the seat height and the integrated seat mast has a two bolt saddle clamp so you can adjust the fore and aft and the angle separately. You'll no doubt have spotted by now that the bike has disc brakes using 12 mm through axles and flat mount calipers but fear not you can get the Madone SLR with rim brakes if you prefer so the company is supporting rim brakes and disc brakes where some manufacturers have gone down the disc brake route with their new aero bikes. I tested the previous Madone with rim brakes and they work well and they're nicely integrated into the fork and the rear stays, but they're fiddly to set up and a bit finicky. And I personally prefer the simplicity of hydraulic disc brakes and the extra power and modulation you get as well. So now we should probably address the £10,000 price tag and why it's so expensive, because you're probably wondering, why is it so pricey? Well, two things. You're paying for a state-of-the-art aero frame. Many man-hours of development have gone into the frame, wind tunnel testing, computer testing, to ensure it's as aero as possible and meets the needs of the modern racing cyclist and also competes with the rivals in this sector. So a lot of time and effort gone into the frame and you're also getting the high grade 
uh, OTLV 700 carbon fibre, so it's as light as it possibly can be. You're getting all this ISO speed decoupler technology as well. So there's a lot of innovation, a lot of interesting stuff as well. And you've also got a new carbon handlebar, uh, two-piece handlebar setup at the front. You're also getting top-end kit as well. So we've got a full Shimano Durace DI2 group set with electronic shifting and hydraulic disc brakes. Probably the best group set on the market right now. Oddly though, there's a compact 5034 chain set, which looks a bit out of place on a race bike, a bike designed for high speed. So what's that all about track? I don't know. That's a bit of an odd one that is. I would personally fit a 5236 or if I was uh, manning up a 5339, especially if I was racing. So that is an odd spec choice. But other than that, it's all good kit. Got Bontrager airless deep section wheels to complement the aerodynamics of the bike with Bontrager's own 25 millimeter wide tires. Got Bontrager saddle, Bontrager bar tape, all looks good. So probably that time in the video, you're wondering how does it ride? Well, let's go for a spin and find out. <laughs> Bloody hell, this bike is quick. There's no doubt about it. It's one of the fastest aero race bikes I've yet tested. It's just savagely quick. At all speeds, just feels so capable. Get it above 30K now, and it just keeps on ripping along. It builds up speed really well. It keeps building on the speed until you can't keep up anymore. Your heart rate's maxing out. Your lactic like acid building up, and you just want to quit. But the bike's asking for more. The handling lets you make the most of the high speed this bike is capable of. It turns in the corners extremely well. The brakes give you plenty of control on technical descent. And the ride quality is generally very, very good. The speed of this Trek Madone is incredible. It's addictive as well. Every time you go out, you can't help but smash along as fast as you can manage. You can ride along at a more sedate pace, but it doesn't want to be ridden slowly. It wants to be ridden fast. And you just got to have the legs to keep up with it, basically. You find yourself going faster and faster until the point when your heart, your legs, your lungs say no more and wave a white flag. But the Trek Madone is so capable. If I was racing, this would be the bike I would choose. Unfortunately, the ISO speed decoupler doesn't quite provide the level of smoothness that I would hope and you might imagine given the hype surrounding the bike when it launched a year ago. It just doesn't filter out the bumps as much as I would like. It's still a very firm ride. It's still very much a race bike. Even though I've got the ISO speed decoupler in the softest setting, it's still not as smooth as I was expecting. The front end is very firm. You can feel every imperfection through the handlebars, every little ripple bump in the road to get transferred directly through the front wheel, the fork and into the handlebars. The back end, meanwhile, is still very, very firm. You do get a bit of isolation from some of the bigger impacts, potholes and cracks in the road, but on very small bumps, it's just not responsive enough, just not soft enough pretty much the equivalent of an F1 car. And on my local roads here in the Cotswolds, which are pretty crap to be honest, it's just a bit hard work, a bit tiring, especially on longer rides. I've been testing this Trek Madone in isolation, but I've ridden a few of its rival aero bikes, and the one that springs to mind is the latest specialised S-Box Venge. That has no gimmicks to speak of, but it still provides a very smooth ride. Smooth, relatively speaking, for an aero bike. And to be honest, I don't think there's much in it between this Trek Madone and the specialised Venge when it comes to compliance at all. Would I buy it? Well, that's a tricky question, really. I love the speed. I'm addicted to the speed this bike provides. The handling's really good. It looks fantastic as well, and I love all the components, the Durace group set and the Bontrager wheels, and the tyres are good as well. However, I'm not totally sold on the benefits of the IC speed decoupler. I'll have to do some real back-to-back -back testing with a few key rivals in the sector to really 
see how much extra benefit it offers. But based on comparison with other bikes I have ridden, I don't feel it offers enough benefit, especially on my very rough local roads. So would I buy the Trek Medone SLR disc? Well, no, for the main reason that I couldn't afford to. 10,000 pounds of weight above my pay grade. And yeah, I couldn't afford to as much as I do love the speed and handling of the bike. However, I would go and check out the new Medone SL. I think there's an SL6 and SL7 just recently launched in a story on Road CC. I'll put a link in the description below. And that basically offers the same frame with a different grade of carbon to keep the price down. I think it starts at 3,600 pounds. So again, all the same aero performance, the same handling, hopefully same ride quality, but just a weight penalty, but a big saving on your bank balance. So um, that's a bike I would probably consider take off a test ride and see how it performs. It'd be really interesting to see how that bike does compare uh, to this one, if there's much uh, trade-off in terms of performance. But as the rain starts to fall, I think it's a good time to bring this video to a close. I hope you enjoyed watching this video review of the new Trek Medone SLR disc. Got any questions, do put them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed watching and hit that subscribe button as well if you haven't already. And I will see you all again in the next video. See you later, guys.